Hello, good evening and welcome to New Forest Moors. Tonight we've got some excitingly good news, a couple of good bits of news. Emily is joining me as my camera lady tonight. Now Emily, in the last video that we did, where we had the bell clutch, you said something in the video which I thought um, was a Mojave in shed, but you said, Dad, what's that black and white snake looking like in there? We had all those bells. And I said, oh, it's probably a Mojave in shed. Once it's shed out, we'll soon see what's going on. Well, the bell clutch have shed out and we've, we actually have now identified all the animals and it looks as though we've got an exantic amongst them which tells me we're not sure which exantic because there are at least four possibly five exantics i think you've got the red exantic you've got the jolliffe exantic you've got the mj exantic you've got the vpi exantic and you've got the tsk exantic that's five different exantics so they're not compatible with each other so the challenge that we've got is to try and find out which exantic is being carried by the parents now to reduce an exantic um, Panda, who is our bamboo girl, let's have a look and see her again. There she is, she's shed out. So she is carrying 100% het for Exantic in her that we didn't know about. And her son, which is over here, Bowser, was blessed with a, to be 100% Exantic for the same Exantic because it came from her. And Casper. Although you can't see it, it's 100% het for Exantic as well. So let's have a little look and see. There he is, got a beautiful blue eye. So he's now shed out as well. They both shed out. And so by putting them together to produce bells, we didn't realise that there were these hidden genes in both of them, but they manifest themselves in a visual, uh, in a visual way because a het to het came together. And we should have got at least two Exantics out of Clutch of Eight. We've got one visual, but we might have another Exantic in the bells that we can't see. We might even have three or four. So the whole value of the Clutch has now suddenly gone up. The other good news is we sold one of um, her other babies, which was a Mojave girl, not Mojave, a bamboo girl, to Gary uh, last year. And Jared has just um, emailed him to tell him the good news that included in the Het Ultramel gene there in the same animal not only is it het for ultra it's also a het for exantic so bowser is now a double het which is fantastic news he's carrying casper. Sorry? Casper. sorry casper sorry great news because he can now guarantee either mojave or bamboo but then also he's got ultra and he's got an exantic which exantic we don't know yet so that's wonderful it means that his um, ability to produce more offspring is fantastic in fact that then leads me on to the next point is what we're going to do with him for the future breeding year well, we've got his sister, which I'll show you over here, called Zig. Let's have a quick look at her. So she may be carrying the exotic gene as well. So here's, actually it's Zag. So we sold Zig to Gary. So here is Casper's sister. Let's have a little look at her. She's about 1700 grams. So she's going to be entering the breeding season soon. And we could put them together. Now, that might produce an ultra male Exantic because if she is carrying Exantic, it's going to be the same Exantic as Casper. And also, they're both het for ultra male. So we could get a visual ultra male, we could get a visual Exantic, and we could get a bamboo Mojave, we could get a super version. And that would be a very powerful animal because then you'd end up with effectively the equivalent of a three um it's almost like having three recessives in one animal if you've got a super plus you've got the two other recessive genes that are visual you've effectively created a almost like a triple so we're really really excited about that and uh well obviously jared and i are already sitting down and trying to work out what our breeding plans are now you'll notice over here we've still got a few animals still breeding and bowser was one of our animals that um, hasn't given us a visual lock this year so we've rested all our boys during the hot weather over the last two months so we've been doing no breeding at all for two months because it was just too hot and then we had this massive storm come in so today I decided to just see whether Bowser would be willing to lock with another girl which we call Shadow which we bred three years ago and she is a super cinnamon 100% het for pied and the idea is we want to produce some visual pieds that are going to be het for lavender albino and also we want to make sure there's a guaranteed cinnamon in there and because she's a super cinnamon we'll be able to get a cinnamon in that as well but rather than disturb them I've put a towel over them because they're still in the process of locking 
and um, it allows us to film without disturbing them. And let's have a little look, Emily. There's the picture I took about an hour ago. And I sent it to Jared and he's so happy because this is his girl, Shadow. And Bowser is my boy. So it's a joint project between the two of us. And I've got a close up of the lock as well, if you want to go and zoom in on the lock. And this is in August. Now I don't think we've um, done any locks in August before. So this is the first for us. We've always kind of uh, rested our animals, but because Bowser hasn't locked, he doesn't need much resting, does he? <laughs> He's been resting all season. So. <laughs> but I want to get Emily's reaction. What's your reaction to the fact that we've got an Exantic, Emily? That's the thing I was going to ask you about. It's pretty cool. I think do you it's not have cool. any other Exantics? We do. We've got um, a Thor, who's a VPI Exantic, and I can show you him. He's um, a VPI Exantic, 100%. Actually, no, he's a Visual Pied Exantic. And here he is. I'll show you where he is. So the other option we've got Can is you we not just breed him to a girl. We could plug him into the bamboo girl, and then if we get a visual exantic, we know that they're carrying VPI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if we don't get a visual exantic, it's one of two things: either she's not carrying it, and therefore we don't know, or it may be that there's another exantic TSK. It could be um, the Jolliffe, it could be the MJ Exantic. So at some point, I would like to know what Exantic we've got. And at some point, we're going to have to go through um, several breedings to be able to establish that. Or the other alternative is they've now got shed testing, Emily, where they can send, we can actually take a shed of our animal, send it to um, a laboratory where they can actually um, work out the DNA of the animals and find out what genes are being carried. Um, it is quite expensive at the moment, but the price may come down. But for expensive animals like this, is worth about fifteen hundred pounds. This animal. So you think to yourself, if I had an animal of that value, I'd spend a hundred pounds testing it because it makes sense to. The other way is to prove it out by breeding them. So you know we've got options there. But that was a good thought, Emily. We could certainly try to prove them out with uh, prove them out with this guy. Um, and we've also got the female version of Thor who was doing really well, and I'll just show you her as well. She's coming up for 800 grams. She was a very slow feeder. She was fed live mice before we bought her. The guy in Europe was breeding it for us. So that is Thor's ultimate partner, but she's nowhere near big enough. She's only 800 grams. So uh, again, we could also put um, Casper to her and find out whether they can produce visual exantics as well when she's big enough and that could also tell, tell me what's going on there. Or the other option, we could, actually what might be really sensible is to put Thor to Panda. Because she'll probably breed again for us, mm -hmm. she's so good, so big. And then if we produce exantics we know it's VPI. Mm -hmm. That might be a clever, yeah. the clever way to do it. Because she's definitely got it if she's produced one. Well, she's definitely got it because yeah. she has produced Casper that's got it and she yeah. may have produced other offspring but I think what I should do is bring out the baby that we've now yeah. come out with. Do you want to have a look at the baby and you can tell me what your thoughts are but it's, um, it's a bit of an exantic uh, video this one. Um, let's just uh, bring him out. Now he has, he has got the Mojave in him but you'll see the silver and the blacks in his head. There's no yellow pigment. What Exantic does, it strips out the yellow, oranges, and all the lighter colours. Now, I'll get out another Mojave so you can contrast it with um, this Mojave Ultramel Silky girl. And you'll see the difference between the animals because you'll see that the Mojave has a lot more pigment in it. And you'll see the yellows in this one. I mean, this one's quite a dark one, but she has got more. See the yellows and the browns? So that's a Mojave Het Ultramel girl, Silky. She's a picky feeder. She should be ready to breed, but she's nowhere near. She needs another 500 grams. But just look, contrast the two Mojaves. Can you see how silver he is compared to her? So that is definitely an Exantic, but we are not sure what the Exantic is. So we'll just put her back. And we'll get that guy back onto his hot spot as well. I think this is the point I think I'd like to say is that though there's lots of things that can go wrong in breeding, there's equally lots of things that can go nicely for you and give you a bonus.
And I say, once you know there's exantic in what you have, it can double or even triple the value of your snakes, which is wonderful from a cash flow perspective because as we've got six, five bells, so if we have a look at the bells of this clutch, they could be carrying exantic, Emily, which means the value of the bells goes up another gear. Do you want to come over to here? I'll have them pull them out. I'll just show you what we've done. So, these are all the bells that we've set up. One, two, three, four, five bells. Let's have a little look and see if there's anything in there. There's the first bell. If you zoom in, can you see any patterns on her? A little bit. I can see some bamboo patterns on her, actually. In fact, she may be a super bamboo, that one. But also, it could also have exantic, and you find with exantic, you can use a black light to kind of find out these patterns. But we must, might have to get one of those. But um, they're all doing really well, and we'll be presenting a meal to them later this week when Jared's back in the facility. And there's another one over here. Let's bring that one out a second under the light and see whether we can. This one's got some really interesting patterns. Wow, that could be exantic. Look at that crazy patterns. That could be an exantic if you look carefully at the color scheme. It's more like bamboo. No, but I can see like hidden blacks in there if you look really carefully. That's crazy. I mean, I've never seen a bell with such crazy patterns. I've got a feeling that could be exantic as well because we should have had at least two exantics in the clutch. So that may well be the hidden exantic. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up on the lighting. Unless I turn it around this way a little bit, maybe you can get the lighting in from a different angle. Or maybe come around the other side, Emily, because I think your shadow's casting. Come in, come, in on that, come in on this angle and video it from there. And get in really close to the patterns. But that could be a exantic super bamboo. Okay. But really beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see the shadow of black in there. That's why I think that could be exantic. And I think Jared noticed it as well when they came out of shed. He thought it was a crazy pattern. But that is super exciting. We'll just have a look at these other bells, see if there's anything else going on with them. We'll just cover up. There we go. And then we've got uh, this one here. Now, they all like to hide on the paper at the moment. <laughs> Anything going on? Oh, that one looks very colourful as well. I can see quite a lot of patterns in that one. Can you see any patterns, Emily? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of black. That could be an exantic as well. I think we may have really hit something here. Where are you seeing the black? Oh, I'll pull it out. I can see a lot of black going down the centre of the animal. Again, I'm going to show you. Is that not just the bamboo part of it? I don't know. There's something going on there. But as I'm looking at it, I can see it might be a super bamboo, but could be exantic. Yeah, it just looks like bamboo to me. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's, it's the very nice blue eyes. could be the impact of a super bamboo. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. All right, let's just check the other two. See if there's any other signs for us. But um, very exciting. The hardest thing here is we'd like to make some of these available, but <laughs> until we know what's in them, it's going to be really hard to price them correctly. But if anyone else out there is looking for uh, potentially a double head ultra male exantic which has got a bell complex please let us know and maybe we can strike up a deal because we've obviously got several of them so this one here let's have a little look and see see look at this one here this one hasn't got as many patterns as the other ones it's more kind of white if you look carefully although I can see some bamboo in there as well yeah can you see the bamboo yeah They're all going to have bamboo, but one of them will have bamboo Mojave and another one might be bamboo bamboo. And again, it's going to be difficult to find out what they've got until you actually prove them out or you do the um, shed tests. Okay, and then the last one. Can you tell between the eye colour as well? Why, are they all blue, aren't they? Well, I thought that well, what was black eyed. Was that black eyed? Was it black? Or was it blue? Mm, no, that was blue. Yeah, I think they're all blue. 
I mean, if you but get that one was just very blue. That one. Yeah, if you get one that's black, it's likely to be a super fire, or it's likely to be an ivory. That's you know. <laughs> so uh, there's one more. Here we go. One more here. Let's have a little look. They're so chilled and so relaxed and so happy. Though, aren't they lovely animals? Beautiful. And I actually quite like the fact that there's hidden pattern in, in the bells. And I think they'll obviously be valuable to have in your collection, breeding them out. So that's the update on those. Now we've also got the other clutch that I haven't shed out yet, but we've put them over here. And they may well have shed. Now I've put them over here actually. I've just moved things around. So let's just see if they're shed out yet. There we go. Oh, starting to shed. Let's just have take them out and see which ones have shed. There we go. So, what would you say, Emily? We'd say they just literally shed. I think the top one looks like a orange dream bamboo. Can you see the top one? That's got orange dream and uh, cinnamon, sorry. I think the one underneath has got orange dream, cinnamon and banana, which is the one that me and Jared really like the look of. This one to the right is a pastel, I think that's a pastel banana. Might have orange dream in it as well. Is there two of those or just one? Just the one. And then the one to the left, there's four animals in total. In fact, all of them are shut out. So we could actually put them in their individual rubs. I don't think rubs. this one has. I think it has. You sure? Yeah. He looks like he's got some. Maybe not, maybe not. Okay, we'll give him a bit more time, but we'll leave them in there. So, aren't they looking beautiful? So, we've got everything's happening here. It's all happening very spontaneously as well, so. That's a beautiful looking clutch. I love the, the richness. Look at the richness of the cinnamons with the orange dream in. And they could be pastel as well in there. Aren't they beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. I feel like that one looks a bit brighter than that one. Yeah, this one's probably got the orange dream and this one's probably just, just straight normal. cinnamon. I think it's absolutely stunning and that could actually be pastel as well. So, super excited about these, these animals here. Right, now obviously to make room for all the hatchlings we've had to upgrade a lot of our snakes upwards. So we've moved our couple of our um, animals from last year up and I'll just show you what we've done with those. Just put this back. But I suppose while we're on the hatchlings I might just give you an update on how the clowns are doing. So let's have a look and see the size of these clowns. Now they're all putting on good size. Now this is our probably our number one snake of the season which we're hoping is the complete animal and this is a hopefully a gravel clown that's got two doses of pastel and it's got lesser in so it's a super pastel lesser gravel clown is what we're hoping for and I'll just show you what she's like she's put on tremendous weight I mean she's only literally six weeks six weeks old and Jared's been feeding them and they've been feeding every week beautifully for us uh, rat fluffs and you can see they've doubled in weight so that came in at 70 that's about 140 already and it's only been six weeks since we've had them so it's pretty good going so they've they're all feeding well on that side and we also have another clown which we think could be a gravel clown so I'll just give you a quick upgrade update on that one as well Let's see how that one's eating well too um, Let's have a look at this one. This one's called Finn. God, he's completely pooed in here. I think I'll give him a good clean. We won't bring him out. He's had a good old poo. So <laughs> we'll bring him out another time, I think. But let's have a look at some of the other siblings and see how they're doing. Now here's one that's het for clown, but we think it's definitely got gravel in. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? And again, it's doubled in size. That's the super pastel gravel lesser 100% het clown and we haven't sexed them yet but we'll have to do that soon but that's coming on beautifully and we've got some other animals which could become available and the ones that I'm going to show, share with you now is let's have a little look this one here definitely a lesser pastel and it could have gravel in as well he's about to go into shed and we've also got this one here which are, they're both very similar animals I think he has shed he's got stuck shed on him 
Has he got stuck shed? Yeah. All oh, right, we need to give him a little bit more humidity in there. So there's the other one. That's the one that's going into shed. So what we tend to do is just give them a little bit of extra humidity. A little bit of water on the hot spot is normally enough to do the business. We run about 60% humidity in the facility with our humidifiers, but we need to supplement them a little bit with a little bit of extra water on there. And I'll do the same with this one, I think, and just give that a little bit of extra water and that'll help them to shed out a little bit better. So they're all doing well, all putting on good size. And then let's see, there's the um, other clutch that we've got growing nicely, which is the, um, one to the bottom here, Emily. We've got the uh, pastel um, pins, lemon blasts. So a little look and see how they're doing. They've had their first meals, they're starting to put on some size. And these are 100% HEP for G stripe. That one looks like it's going into a shed. So we'll just add a little bit of water just to help them shed out. And there we go. And I just need to top up that water. Beautiful. And the other ones are doing. This one has shed out so you'll see this one in its, you can see I've actually, there we go that's just shed out so that is a beautiful animal and the giving us a perfect shed so that is your beautiful pastel pin 100% HEP per G stripe and it's good size let's see if you'll let me handle him a little bit there we go Aren't they lovely? Just beautiful oranges. And you can see they're eating well. They've put on probably 30 grams since they've been born. They've had about three meals. So we shall sex them soon and then we'll make some of these available if anyone would like to get into the pin project with uh, G-Stripe. There's an opportunity there. And there's the shed. As you can see, it's a nice clean shed. And that's what we like. We like to have all animals do a nice clean shed. So let's put that one back. And we've got a couple of bananas as well in that clutch that are doing well and they're all eating well. Um, the other thing I was going to say is in Jad and I in the process, and Emily you're going to help us as well, we're in the process of trying to work out what our breeding pairs will be for the next season. And we've got one boy that might be ready to go later in the year and I'll just bring him out for you. So this is our ultra pied boy. Let's have a little look and see how he's doing. Perhaps give him a weight. But he's one of my favourite snakes and we've decided to give him a name. And guess what his name is? What? Ganga. Ganga? Yeah. He's not really anything like Ganga. <laughs> oh really? But we know it's one of your favourite names. But we thought hopefully he'll be a star. So we'll just give him a quick weigh. I'll bring the scales over. How much do you think he's weighing? Mm, 300. Sorry? 300. I think he's closer to 500. Oh, really? I yeah. don't weigh snakes. In we like our snakes to be 700 minimum. Let me, let me give him a hold and guess. Okay. Mm, 400 then. 400? So let me just set the scales first and then I'm going to say 520. You got me right. Okay. So you tell me what you think. 442. 442. So he's put on 200 grams since we've had him. And he's only about a year old. And let's just have a little look and see how he's doing. Isn't he just beautiful? He's got to be one of my favourite snakes in the facility now. And uh, isn't he just doing lovely? He's eating every week. He virtually even eats in shed. Uh, that's probably why he's doing so well and he's putting on such good weight but he is a very very important part of our future breeding plans and we've got lots of really interesting projects for him uh, we've got a caramac girl that's three years old that's complete ultra male that we could plug him into that one and that would give us ultra males that are going to be 100 percent het for pied which would be a nice project to go on for we can put him to a clown girl one of our precious clowns enchi clowns or 
pastel lesser inchy clowns um, and that would then produce some wonderful um, triple heads so that would be like pied ultra male and clown with two or three codoms thrown in for good measure so that could be another option that we've got but um, he's on his way, he's 444, I would say about another three or 400 grams and possibly another six months could actually set, up, set us up nicely for maybe mid next year we could start breeding with him. But we'll see, but he's doing really well and we're very happy with how he's progressing. And we've also got some other projects for him which are Pied Girls 100% Het for Ultra Male and when they're big enough um, he'll be plugged into those as well. So, I think that's just about it for now. I know Emily's, um finds it quite uh, sweaty. sweaty in here because <laughs> the humidity is high. But I thought I'd just give you a little update and a little discussion on the Exantic. Let me know your thoughts and feelings and your views. I hope everyone else is having a wonderful weekend and uh, we shall catch up next week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.